Let's look at another example of calculating an integral that's going to require you, uh, trigonometric substitution. Uh, let's evaluate the integral of the function 1 over x squared and the square root of x squared plus 4 uh, with respect to x. So much like our previous examples we've seen in this lecture here, uh, this square root of x squared plus 1 really indicates to us that we should be using some type of trigonometric substitution because we have a square root with the sum or difference of squares inside of it. Now, if we come back to our codex here that helps us translate between the algebra and the trigonometry, um, unlike all the previous examples where we've worked with type 1 here, which led to a sine substitution, in this situation, we actually have a sum of squares. Uh, remember, on the previous slide here, we had the square root of x squared plus 4. So we're looking for the fact that a, oops, a is 2. And so we need to take the square root of 4 plus x squared. This tells us that we actually need to do a tangent substitution, x equals 2 tangent theta, like so. Uh, and this is the reason why we want to use a tangent substitution is because we're going to utilize the Pythagorean identity, 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. That is, we can turn a sum of squares into a perfect square. Thus, when we take the square root of secant squared, we're going to get secant. Uh, so because, because of this, because we have this 1 plus tangent squared equal to secant, what we're going to see is that our square root of 4 plus x squared is going to become a 2 secant theta. But I'll show you some details of that in just a moment. All right. So clearing this out so we can see things a little bit better. Uh, like I said, we're going to do a, a trig substitution. So because we have this x squared plus 4 inside the square root, like our codex tells us, we're going to set x equals to 2 tangent theta. Then taking the derivative, we're going to end up with 2 secant squared theta d theta. And then the other thing you need to deal with is the square root itself. What is the square root of x squared plus 4? Like I mentioned before, this is going to be the same thing as 2 secant theta. Um, because tangent and secant are, are just BFFs, right? They're best friends forever. So by starting with a tangent substitution, it's going to turn the square root into a secant. Uh, you can follow that sort of just on faith. Or if you want to see a little bit more of a justification, there is uh, there's certainly an algebraic way of seeing this, mostly just by plugging in for x, the 2 tangent. If we take the square root of 2 tangent squared, excuse me, 2 tangent, we square the whole thing, add 4 to that. Well, then you're going to get this factor of 4 because you get a 2 squared that's divisible with both. You get the square root of tangent squared plus 1. And like we saw before, tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. That becomes a 2 times the square root of secant squared, 2 secant. So using the identity, we can verify this fact. Uh, that's, that's enough evidence. Let me get rid of that. Um, again, the way that I've, I seem to advertise that I like is what if we consider the right triangle? Because uh, again, this I think helps us not just with the initial substitution, but it helps us translate back. If we have this right triangle, oops, this right triangle like so, then we associate it with the angle theta. Well, the, the original substitution here involving x and theta was this right here. Solving for tangent of theta, we get tangent theta equals x over 2. Uh, tangent being the opposite over adjacent ratio, we see that the opposite side is x, the adjacent side is 2. And by the Pythagorean equation, we're going to get that the hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 4. The third side of this right triangle will always be the square root that activated the trig substitution. Now, if you're trying to solve for the square root here, what you want to do is find a trig identity that relates together uh, the square root and the constant side. With these triangle diagrams, you always have one side that's x, one side that's a constant, and then the third side will be the square root. Find the ratio that connects the constant with the, uh, the, the square root. And there's two ratios that could be used here because this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. We could either do cosine, uh, cosine would be 2 over the square root, or we could do secant, secant theta equals the hypotenuse, 
over the adjacent side. Clearing the denominators gives us the identity that we want here. And so again, however you prefer to do it, you need to establish the fact that the square root of x squared plus four is equal to two secant theta. That's gonna be useful in this substitution. So now let's go about and translate the integral into from x variable to theta here. So the one, we don't have to do anything with it, but the dx, like we saw before, will become a two secant squared theta d theta. The x squared on the bottom will become, well, we'll just replace the x with a two tangent, uh, but do remember to square that. And then the square root on the bottom becomes a two secant, which we have right there. And so then once we've switched everything from x to theta, uh, simplify things as appropriately, right? So there's a two on top, we can cancel with that too. There's a secant on bottom that cancels up with one of the secants on the top. Um, the, the two on the bottom here, you'll square to get a four, that's a constant multiple, I'll factor out. We get a one fourth, the integral of secant theta d theta all over tangent squared. And so that's fairly simple, but we have to remember our goal is to integrate that thing. Is this in a format that's really inclined for integration? Um, if we had like a secant squared on top, that would be wonderful uh, because you could do a u substitution where u equals tangent theta. But the problem is we don't have a secant squared on top anymore. We, had a, we have only a secant and introducing a secant in the bottom doesn't really help us out too much. So in this situation, I think it probably is to our advantage to switch things to sines and cosines. If you're not sure what to do with secant and tangent, you can always switch it over to be sines and cosines. It can be more messy that way, but sometimes if you just get st stuck, it's better to do something than nothing. Um, the secant on top becomes a one over cosine theta. Uh, the tangent on the bottom, uh, well, since tangent sine over cosine, we're taking the reciprocal, we're gonna get cosine squared on top sine squared on bottom. And so in this situation, if we try to simplify some cosines here, uh, you're gonna get a cosine on top, a sine squared on bottom. Now this one's very much in line for a U substitution. Uh, let me write the simplified form here. We have one fourth the integral of cosine theta d theta over sine squared theta. So now in this situation, if we do a U substitution where U is sine, and then du would be cosine theta d theta. You see exactly that this thing looks to be of the form one fourth, the integral of du over u squared, or if you prefer, we'll do u to the negative two d theta. Uh, that's a nice power function expression. Uh, finding the antiderivative, that should be fairly much a cinch. Uh, we're gonna get one fourth you raise the power to negative power, so it's gonna be raised to negative one, and then you divide by negative one at a constant. Uh, that's of course the same thing as just negative one over four u plus your constant. And so now we, we, have, we have the variable u, remember where we, where we are in our journey, right? The original function is in terms of x, we needed to get it back to x. So let's switch from u to theta. That should be fairly painless given the u substitution is still here on our screen. Uh, we're going to end up with negative 1, 1 over 4 sine theta plus our constant. Um, if you don't like the sign of the denominator, we could always write this as a, uh, as a cosecant. Or we we're going to switch this back to x either way. So it doesn't make much of a difference, whichever you prefer. Uh, now, and help, help us to translate sine back. It might be useful to come look at this original triangle. Uh, now, remember, we're trying to do sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, so connecting those together would do sine x over the square root of x squared plus four, or if you prefer to do cosecant, it would be the square root of x squared plus four over x. Again, it doesn't really matter too much. As long as you're consistent, make a choice and do one or the other. So we'll stick with sine here. So with the sine substitution, we get negative one over four times x over that square root, square root of x squared plus four. Now, I'm not a big fan of having fractions inside of fractions, so if we reciprocate this, we end up with negative the square root of x squared plus four over four x plus a constant, and this then gives us the antiderivative we were looking for. So a trig substitution involving the tangent substitution as opposed to sine, it works very similar. It's really is, you just use your triangle diagram to help you work through it. 
Um, you have to translate from x into theta. You integrate the trigonometric integral, and then you have to translate the theta back to x. And in order to calculate the trigonometric integral, you might have to do techniques like u substitution, like we saw in this example, or integration by parts, or some trigonometric identities, whichever you need to do.